Well, good afternoon and welcome to Litson RV, where today we are so excited to unveil for you the extended version of the Winnebago Touring Coach Solus here at our marketing studio at Litson RV, only one mile from the Winnebago factory based right here in Forest City, Iowa. I want to welcome all of you today watching on YouTube Live, on Facebook Live, on our website, Litson.com, and for our Twitter followers on Periscope. With today's Litson RV Live experience, this will be an interactive presentation, and that's what really makes these so beneficial for you, our guests, is where we can communicate with you as we cover your questions live that are relevant to the Winnebago Solus. So if you're watching on YouTube Live, you can actually chat in on the right-hand side in the chat box. If you're watching on Facebook Live, you can actually just comment in down below. Uh, if you're watching on our website, listen.com, there's a chat box off to your right. And for our Periscope Twitter followers, you can very simply tweet any questions in, and we'll cover those live as we walk through the differences between the Solus 59PX and the Solus 59P. I also want to welcome our team members here today, our awesome marketing team, uh, Hope Litson, uh, Rhonda Gertis behind the camera, she's our marketing and special events director, and Maggie Breister is our marketing manager. Uh, as she does with all of our Litson RV Live experiences, I also want to welcome Heidi Thompson. Uh, Heidi is our vice president and general manager here at Litson RV, and she'll be covering and uh, jumping in with any questions that you chat into us today. So also keep in mind, this is the same type of an interactive presentation that our factory trained consultants do with our guests on a daily basis. Uh, we can go live in a heartbeat on our website on Litson.com and cover anything on any of our in-stock RVs that are relevant and important for you uh, as we do on a daily basis here at Litson RV. So just reach out to your consultant here at Litson RV and we can go live and cover the things that are important to you on any of our in-stock RVs. So last week Winnebago uh, unveiled the Solus 59 uh, PX, which is the extended version of the Solus. And we have such great content on our website. Our marketing team does such a great job. Our complete full walkthrough video on the 59PX will be live shortly. So what we thought we would do today is cover live for you, really in four main compartments, the differences between this, the 59PX, and the Solus 59P, which has been out now for about a year or so. So this is the 59PX, and we're going to cover really things in four different categories. We're going to cover changes to the chassis. Uh, we're going to cover the all-new gear garage uh, in the rear. We're going to cover the Coleman air conditioning system up top. And then we're going to also cover an all-new, ultra-quiet, ultra-fuel-efficient Cummins own in 2800i generator. So this Winnebago Solus 59PX is actually on the same wheelbase chassis as the 59P. So it's the same 159 inch wheelbase. So in terms of performance, ride and handling, the two are gonna be identical. It's the same 3.6 liter V6 uh, with 260 pounds feet of torque, 280 horses, same functional characteristics. And for those of you that follow the, the van life and camper van movement from Winnebago Industries, you'll know this as the Winnebago Touring Coach Travato chassis because it is the same chassis. So th this is a 3500 series chassis uh, compared to the 59P, which is actually a 2500 series chassis. So this will have a 9,350 pound gross vehicle weight rating uh, compared to 8,900 in the 2500 series. So we have more gross vehicle weight rating and actually the occupant and cargo carrying capacity between the two, so between the 59P and the 59PX is almost identical at just under 1,900 pounds. So even though we bring in an 80 pound air conditioner on the roof and 113 pound gen set off the rear axle, the occupant and cargo carrying capacity levels are almost identical. So just under 1,900 pounds. From that then, you'll reduce for any uh, occupants for any cargo or any stuff that you bring, and then for any fresh water that you may uh, travel in transit with. It's already been deducted uh, for a full tank of gasoline and a full uh, cylinder of LP. And Ron, we're getting a lot of comments on the color, so yeah. could you go through exterior color options on the yeah, Solus? Yeah, so in, in both models, the 59P and the 59PX, uh, there are two color options. Uh, this is the deep cherry red, 
uh, which then also, so the Studio Loft pop top is also painted deep cherry red. Uh, that's one option. And then we also have the Summit White or the Bright White uh, that you also see on our website. So those are the two color options. Uh, the Deep Cherry Red is an uptick in terms of cost. Um, not only is it an uptick in cost from the manufacturer, from Ram Promaster, uh, but then also Winnebago, uh, through its partners, uh, Deuce um, actually full body paint the uh, pop top in the same Deep Cherry Red. So again, this is really, in essence, going to be a Travato chassis. Uh, so it's going to have the same wheelbase, but then we gain um, the extended area off to the rear, which makes room for the gear garage. So this coach is going to be 21 feet in length compared to the Solus 59P, which is 19 feet 9 inches in length. So very similar, similar ride, performance, and handling, but we're going to gain a gear garage, which is where we're going to head next. Any other chassis questions, Heidi? We good? Just a quick question we had emailed in advance. Can they still add sumo springs, or does it come with sumo springs? Yeah, that, that's a good question. So um, in the Winnebago Travato line, um, now standard are sumo springs. And they're not on the Solus chassis, but we can add them uh, front, front and rear, uh, really whatever the guest would prefer. So one of the things that people are really going to love about the 59PX, not only being cool with the air conditioner, being off the grid with the ultra quiet generator, but now we have a gear garage in the rear. So one of the things that we had showcased in the Solus 59P when we unveiled that was the rear annex. Uh, for the annex and changing area and shower area that expands off of the rear cargo doors. Now we have the capability of being able to secure and keep weather controlled um, high-end bicycles or any cargo that you may want inside this rear gear garage. So this rear gear garage is actually 18 inches in depth and 72 inches in width. So you can actually place two different bicycles uh, in this area and then keep them secure with a new L-Track system. So this is an L-Track system from uh, US Cargo Controls is the company that provides it. And the L-Track system is a flexible system that you can adjust the tie down locations um, just sliding down uh, the, the L-Track system. So Ron, if you kind of zoom in on this side, you'll see three on each side and each then very simply release with a spring-loaded anchor point, and then you have a strong, sturdy O-ring to secure your, your cargo. And again, there's two in the floor, uh, one on each side, and then there's two in the walls, one at about midpoint, and then one in the upper area. As I kind of get out of the way here from the roll-up screen, you can see the L-screen system. You good? And again, that's the L-screen system from US Cargo Controls. And again, it's an 18 by 72 inch rear gear garage uh, right behind the Murphy bed system. Really in essence from the gear garage forward, the two floor plans are identical, nothing changes. Uh, the 59PX in the extended version uh, is only available with the Murphy bed option at this point. Um, we're not aware of any changes to bring in the rear sofa bed. Uh, but again, it does have the rear Murphy bed, um, storage system, storage in the floor, and then also the sliding table out the rear. A couple questions for you. Dan on our website is wondering if someone can increase the ground clearance, and if so, what's the recommended way? So ground clearance is going to be a little bit challenging. There are some upfit companies out west that will do that through a lift kit. Um, you certainly can do that. You'll gain a little bit more ground clearance just in terms of the jounce, in terms of transit, if we go to Sumo Springs. So not exactly how much ground clearance you're looking for or if you're just looking for ground clearance in, in terms of transit. A couple different ways we can do that. Debbie, on our Facebook page, is wondering if there will be a four-wheel drive option in the future. Uh, the only way that we would have a four-wheel drive option is if Ram Promaster comes out with that in either a four-wheel drive or an all-wheel drive. Uh, we're not aware of that just at the, at the current moment. <clears throat> and then one last one before I let you move on. Um, just wondering about solar, what is on this and what can you expand to? Yeah, so the FlexiMat solar, it's going to be exactly the same as it is in the 59P. Um, it is expandable up to approximately 500 watts on a single solar charge controller. Uh, 230 watts being standard, 
Um, you can get creative and potentially add some slim, slim line panels up on the roof or along the sidewall, but most people will end up using the quick port, uh, which is in the same location on both floor plans. Uh, that quick port allows you to connect a portable solar expansion panel, literally articulate it to the direct sun angle and gain upwards of at least you know, 170 watts. So you're gonna be pretty close to maxing out that solar controller if you just add a, a portable solar panel and a lot of room in the rear with that 18 by 72 inch gear garage. Perfect. So one of the things that people were really on the fence on with the Solus, which has been such a successful product, is how comfortable will I be if I don't have air conditioning? And you know, some of our Solus owners have done some very creative things uh, in terms of using um, either a zero breeze or portable AC units that can be um, stationary on the floor or through the window. And that can, that can provide air conditioning. Uh, what Winnebago has then made room for by using this extended wheelbase, excuse me, extended chassis, same wheelbase, is the Coleman Mach 10 NDQ air conditioner. So up top, this will have the Coleman Mach 10 NDQ or non-ducted quiet. Um, this is a variable speed compressor in terms of the fact that when you do start it up, it does consume less power. So it's, it almost has a built-in easy start, so to speak, because it uses less power upon startup for the compressor, uh, whether you're running it off of the shoreline power or the common zone and generator that we're about to cover. So again, variable speed from the standpoint that you can leave the fan on, however, the compressor will just cycle on and off as it needs to. Uh, the Coleman Mach 10 NDQ that Winnebago uses in the Solus um, actually does have the manual controls. We can then upgrade that to a Bluetooth enabled shroud with a digital thermostat. So if that's something that's important to you in terms of being able to just leave it set and have it cycle on and off and be thermostatically controlled, that's something that we can also provide for you. And that was a question that was emailed in early is if they can add that Bluetooth shroud to their NDQ. And so is that a big deal? Is it a, is it a big expense? It's really not. Um, it's not evasive, um, nor is it that expensive. I believe it's around $300 to add the Bluetooth enabled shroud, but then that also gives you uh, the digital thermostat so that you can leave it on automatic mode. So if you're away from your, away from your van, um, and let's say per, perhaps you're plugged in, or if you are just running the new ultra quiet generator, it will cycle on and off automatically. And then again, you can pair that up to your smartphone or tablet um, using the Bluetooth controls, very simple to pair, but it does provide the capability of controlling it so that if perhaps you have some height limitation and you can't reach that up there, you can certainly just Bluetooth it. So again, that's the Coleman Mach 10 NDQ, which is kind of the third bucket that we wanted to talk about today. So that provides air conditioning. One of the great things about it is, you know, when you're carrying on a conversation, not only is it quiet, but when you're carrying on a conversation up front, um, the air conditioner is in the rear. Um, it does provide the venting out the rear and out the front of the air, but then it also has the omnidirectional vents uh, that come out of the middle of the air conditioner, so they'll blow right over that Murphy bed. So one of the things that we're really excited about is the new ultra quiet Cummins Onan 2800i new inverter generator. And so I think we're gonna see this on more and more products. Uh, we were involved early on in some of the testing uh, for this new Cummins Onan generator, and that was what, Heidi, maybe a year or two ago. So this has been in the works for quite a while. The Cummins Onan 2800i generator really provides a much quieter experience. It's extremely fuel efficient, but it's also lightweight. So let's talk about each of those and, and provide some data to back what we're talking about. So in terms of it being quieter, by reference point, one of the benchmarks that generator companies try to attain to and many have not been able to is to comply with national park decibel ratings for any machine operated equipment within the national park system. And what that regulation is, and it's actually a regulation by law within the national park system, is to not exceed 60 decibels at 50 feet. So if you're 50 feet away from uh, machinery operated equipment, um, you can't exceed 60 decibels. So this new Cummins Onan uh, 2800 watt, or the I as they call it, actually provides um, very similar levels, but it's actually lower. Um, it's almost the exact same level when you're only 10 feet away. So this generator has been tested at 65 decibels at 10 feet. But again, keep in mind, the National Park Foundation is 60 decibels at 50 feet. So if you translate the way that noise travels 
we're anticipating around 58 decibels between 38 and 40 feet. Um, and so you actually only have to comply at 50 feet. So ultra quiet, um, the, the main kind of low idle throttle uh, is similar to kind of a whisper quiet that you may have come to expect through like a Honda or a Yamaha generator. And then at half load, still very, very quiet. And then like the person in the room who doesn't, couldn't explain a decibel, it's just super quiet. We had it on in training this morning and you know, compared to the 4,000 watt Cummins zone and generators we're used to, it's just from a practical application, just super nice. So typically what generates noise, uh, whether it's a, a gasoline powered RV or any type of a machine operated engine, is what those RPM levels. We always talk about the fact that you're gonna be more fuel efficient and you're gonna have less uh, engine howl the lower the RPMs are. So one of the reasons that this new generator is so ultra quiet is because at half load, it only pulls about 2,400 RPM. So exactly at half load, it's 2,445 um, revolutions per minute. Now by contrast, the previous uh, generator at half load was about 3,600. So it's at least 33% quieter. Uh, also very fuel efficient. It is 38% more fuel efficient compared to the previous 2800 watt generator. It literally only pulls two tenths of a gallon per hour at half load. So under complete continuous AC runtime over the span of five hours, you're only gonna burn one gallon of fuel. And as we know with the Coleman Mach 10 uh, NDQ, it's gonna cycle on and off as it needs to. So um, it it's uses a lot less power on startup and Actually, that, that air conditioner only pulls around 10 amps. So it doesn't have a lot of consumptive power as well. Uh, it's also lighter. So it's gonna free up that occupants and cargo carrying capacity. It's gonna provide slightly better fuel efficiency in transit. We know that's gonna be fairly immaterial. Um, but again, it's 12% lighter than the previous 2800 watt gen. Uh, the 2800i, uh, comes in right around 113 pounds, and the previous model was around 125 pounds, but all centered around the exact same footprint. Uh, the 2800i is slightly taller, but um, primarily the same footprint mounted just ahead of that 3,500 pound factory installed tow package. I just really geeked wow. out a lot, didn't I? And it's super quiet. And, it's, and, it's, and it's super quiet. So I have some great generator questions from yep. our website. So Fred is asking, does that new Onan Gen have less ground clearance than the current Onan on the Travato? Uh, just, uh, it, it's a matter of very small inches. I believe it's just a few inches in terms of um, height being difference. And I'd have to check to see if it's actually even mounted higher to where it's a mute point. Uh, one of the things we can do in another live experience, if you want to just check with your consultant, we can actually do an actual ground height clearance test and see what the actual ground height is. But again, it's mounted right behind the rear axle. So if you think about that as you're changing terrains, um, that part of the body of the camper, of the camper van, is actually going to gravitate with the axle. So it's going to absorb that at same jounce level. Great, and how would you say the generator vibration is compared to the one in the Travato? I uh, didn't really even feel it when we ran it this morning uh, during uh, product training with um, our rep from Winnebago. Um, really didn't even feel the vibration because again, it's running uh, lower RPMs at half load and we had the air cranked up on high and it was running right at about half load. Ryan on our website is asking, is the generator only powering the AC or is it hooked up through any of the outlets to power laptops, coffee makers, et cetera? Yeah, that's a good question. I apologize I didn't cover that. So um, really the way that you achieve electricity through any of the outlets, uh, whether it be the 110, 120 volt outlets or the air conditioner is through two different ways. Uh, you can be plugged in as we are right now with shoreline power. So 30 amp shoreline service or even uh, a standard residential outlet at 15 amps or even a standard residential garage outlet at 20 amps uh, will run the air conditioner and all the electrical outlets. Um, however, the coach does have an automatic transfer switch, which means that when we stow that shoreline cord, if we're traveling down the road or if we're just off the grid RVing, once you fire that generator, it's gonna provide complete total 30 amp whole coach electrical service for all of the outlets, for smartphone chargers, tablet chargers, uh, Instapots, uh, CPAP, BPAP machines, whatever you can dream up in an electrical outlet, as well as the NDQ air conditioner. Great. Um, in terms of the air conditioner, um, 
Excuse me, Dan, on her website, I'm going to switch gears. Can one plug in an exterior LP camp stove? Is there an attachment needed? Um, so actually, if it's a camp stove that has a built-in regulator, you would need to remove that regulator. Um, but yes, we can connect an exterior gas grill or cook stop, cooktop stove. But again, we always advise to our guests that if it's one that you just pick up off the shelf, they're going to have a built-in regulator. The coach already has a regulator built into it. So. I knew I had an air conditioner question. So is it, can you say again, I think you did, but is it ducted? So it's non-ducted. So NDQ is non-ducted quiet. It's ducted out the front of the air conditioner, the rear of the air conditioner, and then through two omnidirectional vents, which are right in the middle of the air conditioner. So it's gonna push the air to the rear, to the front, and then also straight down through those omnidirectional vents, but it's not ducted through the ceiling, and I don't believe I've ever seen a camper van that is. Correct well, we'll prove you wrong. <laughs> Let's build one. Um, a question on the pop top. Is that the same pop top as the 59P? It is. It is the exact same uh, Studio Loft pop top um, from Europe um, through the Meyer companies and um, identical. So it's going to be the same seal on the sides, which actually is a wider pop top, so to speak, than you see in some competing RVs by reference. <clears throat> Are there any uh, new options compared to the 59P? Yeah, so um, in the 59P, there really were only two options. It was the Murphy bed or the rear sofa option, and then your choice of exterior color. Uh, in the 59PX, it is only your choice of color, whether you go deep cherry red or if you go summit white. Um, really, those are the only two options. Great, I think you covered it. Awesome. Well, great questions today, and we'll keep our chat lines open here for a little bit. So if you do have any questions, as we covered really the primary differences between the Winnebago Touring Coach Solus 59PX that was just unveiled last week. Again, it's the extended camper van version, uh, really the similar chassis that we're using on the Winnebago Travato. Now with the extended rear gear garage, which also then makes room for the Coleman Mach 10 NDQ air conditioner as well as the new ultra quiet Cummins own a generator. So, oh, we have a question. I, I have a question. You couldn't see it, uh, but I we'll know. cover it. So Ryan on our website, great question. Will <clears throat> the black doors close if the optional solar plug is hooked up or the, do those doors need to be, be open? Uh, yes, you can actually close those doors. The bulb seal gasket um, will contour around that wire. Obviously, if you're using very thick wires, um, that may impair that, but those are really small, thin wires that you can just allow that bulb seal gasket to close on. Carlo on our Facebook page is asking awesome. if there's going to be a sofa bed option. Uh, to our knowledge, no. We've asked that specific question, and at the current time, the 59PX will only be available in the Murphy bed option. And from our YouTube channel, when are they available? Uh, available now. Uh, we have, I think, five already pre-sold, um, and two more available in Late August? September. Early September. Early September. Early September. I apologize. Good question on the water. Can you siphon water in from a tank? Absolutely. So with the new Nautilus freshwater manifold system, uh, one of the things we cover in our walk around video, you can actually provide water to the coach uh, through the city water pressurized input, uh, which means you could leave it for city fill. You can then divert that water into the tanks. But if you are just literally using potable water that you do not have any pressure to, um, so let's say it's through um, a bucket or through you know, a watering area that you have access to, you can actually siphon that directly into the freshwater tank so that you'll have 24 gallons of freshwater capacity. Perfect. Now I'll let you close. But we will still keep our <laughs> chat lines open. Yes. But as we wrap, I do want to thank all of you for joining us today as we unveiled the primary changes of the 59PX compared to the 59P in the Winnebago Solus uh, here in our marketing studio at Litson RV, where we're only one mile from the Winnebago factory based right here in Forest City, Iowa. I want to thank our marketing team, uh, Rhonda behind the camera, Hope Litson, and Maggie Breister, and Heidi, as always, thank you for moderating our chat. Uh, we do actually staff our chat uh, with true Litson RV professionals uh, during normal business hours. So if you want to chat in any questions, you can certainly do that. They are a full team of factory trained consultants and parts consultants here at our dealership at Litson RV. Also, keep in mind, we can do this same type of Litson RV live experience in the comfort of your own home or office 
on any of our in-stock RVs as we do on a daily basis here at Litson RV. So again, thank you for joining us today to unveil the Winnebago Touring Coach Solus 59PX.